Welcome students. Today's lesson, the learning objective is I can use context clues to understand a new word. Puedo usar contexto para entender palabras nuevas. The steps for doing this are above and we'll talk about them in just a moment. First, let's take a look at what you'll need for today's lesson. The materials are pencil and paper or whiteboard and marker. And your learning time is about 10 minutes today, maybe even less. The steps to use context clues to understand a word are up here. You're going to look at the new word and then read the sentence before and after the word, connect what you know with the text, predict a meaning, and check your prediction. That means rereading the sentence using your prediction. So, let's read. Our word here is extravagant. So I'm going to look at the word and then read the sentence before and after the word. So let's start. The guests arrived at the big, beautiful house for the party. There were extravagant decorations everywhere. Gold and diamonds covered every surface. The guests gasped in wonder. Okay, step two, connect what you know with the text. Okay, so let's look here. A big, beautiful house. Hmm, that sounds like a place a rich person might live. They're, they're getting people together for a party. We, there's this word we don't know, extravagant. And then we have decorations like gold and diamonds on every service, surface. And the guests are gasping in wonder when they see these extravagant decorations. So I'm connecting gold and diamonds and a big beautiful house with some, with like a rich person. So extravagant would describe rich as it's like maybe expensive or very nice. So I, my predicted meaning, I predict that the meaning is expensive or really, really nice. So now step four, check your prediction. Reread the sentence using your prediction. There were very nice decorations everywhere. Gold and diamonds covered every surface. There were expensive decorations everywhere. Gold and diamonds covered every surface. Yeah. Let's see. Does it make sense? Yeah, I think it does. Do you need to read further? No, I think I figured it out. Like, I find, found a meaning that works in context. Do I need to use a resource beyond the text? Um, if so, try a dictionary or ask someone. I think I'm good. Let's look at one more example before you um, should try on your own. Look at the new word, then read the sentence before and after the word. So our new word is anthropomorphic. Wow, a lot of big $5 word. Um, so we're going to read the sentence before and after. The children in the show are friends with some animals. The animals are anthropomorphic. They have hands with fingers, walk on two legs, and can talk. Connect what you know with the text is the next step. So um, I don't know what anthropomorphic is at all. Um, although I could maybe try to break it down and see if there are any parts in here. Do I know any words that start with anthropo or end with morphic? Morphic sounds like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and I know that they change into different shapes. Uh, I might, might do something there, but let's, let's look here at the, the context. The children in the show are friends with animals. So the animals are not people, but they have hands with fingers, walk on two legs, and can talk. Hmm. So even though they're not people, they have things that are like people. Hands with fingers, they walk on two legs. Most animals don't do that and they can talk. I, almost no animals can talk, right, aside from parrots. So I'm thinking, my prediction is that this has something to do with being like a person. So I'm gonna say that my prediction is, are like people. Check your prediction, reread the sentence using your prediction. The children in the show are friends with some animals. The animals are like people. They have hands with fingers, walk on two legs, and can talk. Does it make sense? Yeah. Do you need to use a resource beyond the text? I might. I, I still might not know how to sound that out. It's a real long word. So if so, I might try a dictionary or ask someone. So now it's your turn. You have three examples here. I'll read them each to you. After I read them to you, I want you to pause the video and write down your prediction for what it means. Number one, he was very curt with me when we talked. He would only say yes or no and refuse to say anything else. I ended up being glad though because we were in a hurry and it was nice to take such a short time to talk. Okay, what does Kurt mean from context? Pause the video and write it down.
Okay, welcome back. You keep that keep that answer because you're going to show it to your teacher before you move on to independent practice today. Number two, John is a deceitful, perfidious man. He doesn't have an ounce of candor in him. He'll lie to you for no reason just because he can. Okay, pause the video and write what you think candor is. Welcome back. Welcome back. Number three. What an insolent child. She stuck her tongue out at me when I asked what time it was. Write down your answer. Okay, today's lesson is done. Here's your next step. Get on Zoom and show your teacher your answers before you go to do today's independent practice. Make sure you do this right away because your teacher is probably going to be having guided reading groups today and you don't want to interrupt or have to come after those groups are done.